Thank you, dear Volker Beck. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for inviting me to your meeting uh, where already yesterday you dealt with the various uh, links between Yiddish and the German language. We discussed uh, commonalities and differences, the historic dimensions of the subject. I'm very happy that we can now open the second part of your very interesting conference. I'm especially pleased that this year we are celebrating 1,700 years of Jewish life in the territory of uh, what today is Germany and thereby also taking a look at Yiddish. The Yiddish language over centuries was the basis of Jewish life and Jewish identity in Germany and in Europe. My, I, I too um, always uh, link this language to special memories. My first encounter with Yiddish, I had long before I started my political career, when I was 17 and a student, I made a memorial trip to Krakow, among other places, where we visited a Yiddish theater play. Many uh, things of what was talking uh, Tom said at the, at the stage, I understood at least in part, and even the things I did not understand sounded very familiar to me because my family comes from Siebenbürgen, as you might know. The Banach uh, is a dialect which is very close to the Franconian spoken at the Mosel River, so I felt at home. Maybe some of you had a similar experience when they first came into contact with Yiddish and so they had a, this impression of familiarity and a very uh, close link between Yiddish and German. This closeliness is of course due to the history of Yiddish in the fact that in the early Middle Age it developed out of the high, Middle High German and even though it uh, changed over the centuries and also adopted a lot of elements of other languages, as we know, the original core has remained. And as Volker Beck has just said, it is still even a, a subject of, uh, for courts today. The links between German and Yiddish is especially strong in some German dialects, such as in the Franconian spoken at the Mosel River. Even in the Franconian Lachudisch, which is still being spoken in the Schopfloch community. This is a mix of the Franconian dialect, Hebrew and Yiddish, and there you can see, really feel it. Before 1933, Yahudish was actually uh, the language of the um, animal traders there, but as also a part of the non-Jewish uh, population learned uh, Jewish, uh, you learned, uh, learned the dialect, the dialect survived, even though all the Jewish um, population was killed in the, in the Shoah. In spite of this um, similarity between German and Yiddish, and even though a lot of uh, terms and idioms of Yiddish have become a firm part of our everyday language, Yiddish is hardly spoken in German anymore in, in Germany. So this explains also why the first contact of many people living in Germany with Yiddish is very often happening abroad, such as it happened to me, where Yiddish is still being used as a lively language. Jewish communities where Yiddish is still spoken exist in the US, in Canada, in Argentina, Mexico and Brazil, but also in Australia, South Africa, France and Israel. According to estimates, those are approximately one million people. But we know there were times when there were much more. Before 1939, in Eastern Europe alone, there were 11 to 13 million Jews speaking Eastern Yiddish, which since the 18th century had been the dominating variant of Yiddish. The language is has almost been extinguished uh, due to Shoah, together with the people who used it for centuries in their everyday life and passed it on to the next generations. Almost uh, National Socialists managed to extinct 
distinguish Yiddish from the Atlas of Languages, but only not completely. Today it is clear that I did not mm, succeed. Yiddish today is a surviving language which in spite of the um, destructions uh, has made its way into our life and which today is uh, um, a rich heritage of literature and an extremely popular music uh, genre. It is also a language which um, has overcome national borders and still is uniting people of different nations. The um, entangled past uh, of Yiddish tell us a lot about uh, the understanding of the Jewish community and the majority society and the fascination of this language. Even though the origins of Yiddish in many aspects are still in the dark, and even though the emergence has not been reconstructed fully, linguists are actually in agreement that in the early Middle Ages, in the upper German area, it was the origin. The, uh, they mentioned the Ashkenazic Jews, which were traders and tra craftsmen and had settled at the Rhine River. Apart from Middle High German, uh, Hebrew, Aramaic, Romanic elements also made its way into Jewish when Jews from Italy and France settled in Germany. They brought with them old Italian and old French elements and introduced them into the language. But very early, the Christian anti-Judaism was there, and with the Crusades in the 11th and 12th century, the first mass pogroms started against the Jewish population in Europe, especially in the Rhine area. Therefore, already from the 11th century, Jews from the German territory emigrated to Eastern Europe. In 1215, Papal, uh, Pope Innocent IV uh, uh, convened the Fourth Lateral Council to defend the Christian belief and to defend it against or to protect it against so called um, wrong believers. Uh, they all forced Jews to wear certain clothes so that they could not be recognized as Jews, as, uh, as Christians, and ghettos were developed. This also um, pro brought about in language wise um, isolation of the Jews, and so the a specific uh, Jewish language could develop. The increasing discrimination escalated in the 14th century when Jews were said uh, to have been originating the pest. So there were uh, extinguishing a lot of uh, Jews and a, a, a wave of emigration started so that after 2013 only very few Jews had, re Jews had remained in Germany. Those events show that hatred against Jews already was to be seen in the Middle Ages. It was uh, so pronounced back then that uh, an incredible number of Jewish people were murdered or had to leave the country. Many Jews uh, became refugees in Eastern Europe, in Poland, Lithuania, Eastern Europe. A lot of Jewish settlements developed where Yiddish was still spoken. In contact with the new environment languages, uh, Jewish language was enriched by Slavic elements. That is how Eastern Yiddish developed which was spoken by an incredible number of people between Warsaw, Riga and Odessa. This development testifies the capability of adaptation of the Yiddish language of those who spoke it and the creation of new Jewish life with its very unique culture in Eastern Europe. Yiddish was um, separating from its original country and the language environment where it had started. In Eastern Europe it continued to live and was part of a unique flourishment of a Yiddish high culture. A Jewish secular movement developed which uh, 
also made Yiddish to a inter-European cultural language. Yiddish theater flourished. The first newspapers were developed, were published in Vilna. There were, for example, Yiddish schools, newspapers, and even a university. There was a very comprehensive, uh, very develop, well-developed um, culture. Moy Mende, Moya Shorim, and others were the founders of Jewish, uh, Yiddish literature as an uh, gen gender of its own. Yiddish Itzak, the only Yiddish um, writer who got the Nobel Prize and who managed to uh, emigrate well on time from Poland into the U.S., was continuing this process. In, the, in this cultural flourishment, uh, the idea of Yiddishland developed, which was a country uh, or a concept of homeland across the content for all, uh, continent for all the Jews. What a tragedy, ladies and gentlemen, that this utopia, um, this um, counter-concept uh, of the early 20th century did not have any chance to continue its development. While Yiddish in Eastern Europe was flourishing and was in contact with the cultural avant-garde, the development in Germany was totally to the contrary. It uh, adapted and assim was assimilated uh, by the German and, and ceased existing as an individual language. In the course of Enlightenment and the French Revolution, the position of the Jews in Euro Europe and in Germany had changed. For the first time, there were ideas of um, equality and equal rights for Jews. Industrial progress also offered new opportunities to rise into the bourgeois community. And as we know, many Jews used this opportunity, and out of their new social position, they provided a lot of impulses for science, culture, and, um, and art of the Emperor's time and the Weimar Republic. At the same time, in the 18th century, High German had also developed in the German territories, so the uh, citizens started to stigmatize dialects and to distinguish themselves by, from other uh, social groups by using High German. As a response to this development also within the Jewish community, they were increasingly thinking that Jewish was a, min a minor um, form of their language. In the following years, it appeared that no assimilation, neither assimilation nor the structure of its own culture could really pave the way out of this hostility against Jews. It doesn't matter whether they assimilated to the majority society or whether they preserved their identity and created their own world. None of the strategies was a means against anti-Semitism, which was uh, found both in the East and in the West. The fact that even in uh, Eastern Europe uh, there was hatred against Jews can be seen from the anti-Jewish programs in 1881 and 1905 in Russia, which also caused many Jews to emigrate to other parts of Europe or to the USA. With Shoah, as we know, anti-Jewish hatred uh, reached its climax and even in Eastern Europe became a strategy. Those whose ancestors had been seeking protection against anti-Semitism in, in Europe believed that their, they had, that their um, relatives and themselves were in, in safety were now becoming the victims of national socialist terror. The Nazis um, destroyed all Jewish life and also um, its uh, unique literature in metropolis uh, like Warsaw, Lemberg, where more than 100,000 uh, Yiddish people were living, only very few survived. The Jewish life, which uh, developed step by step after Shoah, cannot be compared with what existed before that. The losses, ladies and gentlemen, are irrevocable. Not even the highest optimism and willing and the will to reconstruction will um, recover what had been destroyed so systematically. One of the symbols 
for the linguistic uh, disruption is a library in the central bus stop of Tel Aviv. More than 60,000 Yiddish books were collected by people whose children and grandchildren can't uh, read this language anymore. The, however, we should not be blocked to look at what has been preserved and can still survive. Larger groups where Yiddish is part of the everyday language, with the exception of some ultra-Orthodox um, communities in New York, Montreal, Jerusalem and Antwerp, are very few. Modern Hebrew, with its about 9 million speakers, is uh, much more widespread, also due to the decision of the State of Israel um, not to allow an official status uh, to Yiddish, by, but rather uh, using Hebrew uh, and uh, Arab as the official language of the country. But Yiddish is far away from dying out. And even outside ultra-Orthodox uh, communities, it is spoken by many people and is increasingly newly discovered also by non-Jews. So when we look at Europe, we can see that in many places, Yiddish is still spoken or spoken again. According to the European Charter of Minority Languages, Jewish has been spoken in Bosnia-Herzegovina, Finland, the Netherlands, Poland, Romania, Slovakia, Sweden and Ukraine as a language of minorities. In France, by the way, Yiddish is also present, where among other things there is a Yiddish cultural festival, a weekly Jewish, uh, Yiddish uh, radio program and Yiddish theater. And interestingly, not only Jews are interested in Yiddish language. Very successful series such as Unorthodox or Stiefel are showing a wide audience um, an insight of the life of uh, Jewish and Orthodox communities in uh, New York and Jerusalem. In Switzerland, the... Um, the uh, novel of Thomas Mann became a bestseller. Apart from well-known Yiddish words, it also contains new Yiddish words. Since then, uh, by the way, there are many non-Jews in Switzerland which are attending Yiddish language courses. Events such as the Yiddish Summer in Weimar, one of the most renowned festivals for Jewish music and culture worldwide, is having a great audience also in this country. But not only in the cultural context, Yiddish is currently getting a lot of attention. Also in science and research, there is an increasing interest in Yiddish. And this conference, of course, is also one example for the academic exchange with this um, subject which is in many aspects not um, um, fully researched and I thank the Adenauer Foundation for offering this forum here. I'm also very pleased that Germany is uh, one of the um, research centers of Yudistik. The first chair for Yudistik in Germany was founded in 1990 at the University of Trier and in 1996 the second chair followed at the University of Düsseldorf uh, teaching and research activities also take place in other universities, for instance at the Georg August uh, University of Göttingen. The um, College for Jewish Studies in Heidelberg, funded by the Home Ministry, also funds uh, is offering uh, events on Jewish culture. At the Maximilian University of Munich, every year a scientific uh, talk is uh, organized in Yiddish language. As a supplement in many universities in Regensburg, Munich, but also Frankfurt Oder, they are offering Yiddish language courses. Ladies and gentlemen, we can't wind back what has uh, been extinguished uh, during National Socialism. We cannot recover the importance for the Yiddish language, which it once it had. But we can promote it, we can create possibilities to study the, the language, we can also promote it as the mother tongue and honor it as the mother tongue of millions of people who were killed in the Shoah. We can accept it as a very important part of a culture which created great art, 
of theatre and music and which for so many people was um, creating the identity and the feeling for homes. We should also appreciate the um, Jiddish culture and language as a phenomenon of the present time. We do so by accepting it as an individual language and a rich language which not only shaped the past but is also enriching our present times. Apart from that, it is important to ensure that there is a social um, climate free from anti-Semitism because only this way we can ensure that Yiddish language will not be um, uh, uh, restricted uh, for ideologic reasons. The wish to promote Yiddish language is also linked to one political goal. This is our joint fight against anti-Semitism. It is also linked to our fight for a tolerant, a free and democratic society where social minorities and their languages have a firm place in the midst of society rather than being ignored or displaced. Ladies and gentlemen, if we manage to get closer to this vision, we will also manage, I'm deeply convinced of that, we will create favorable conditions for continuation and a dynamic further development of the Yiddish language. Thank you for your attention.